Hello, I'm Sam Barker from Insurance Times. Today we're here in Manchester at the Knowledge Live to discuss compensation regulation. Do you think there is a compensation culture in the UK and why? The uh, extent of the compensation culture idea in Britain is much less than is widely thought. Uh, there are not that many people who think they can make a quick buck out of a particular situation. There are people who want to be able to live their lives in whatever way it is, run their businesses, whatever, feeling they're insured against risk and they're covered in various ways. I do think that some uh, law firms go around to try and develop and whip up a sense of claim and compensation culture, and that's what they do for their business, and of course they're entitled to do that, but I don't respect it very much. But I wouldn't say that's a, a big dominant theme. So obviously there's, there's a lot of debate about whether or not there's a compensation culture. I mean, where do you stand on this? There is a perception of a compensation culture, but I think all the evidence that's been put together so far by the government previously and the Better Regulations Task Force approach, and when you look at the things that Jackson's done and what Young's done, I think all the conclusions are, no, there is no compensation culture, but what there is is a perception of a compensation culture. So there's too much advertising, there's too much encouragement to pursue a claim and that then highlights the issues that we've got on the compensation culture perception. Now some people have said that there is too much fat in the system at present for, for claimant lawyers and that there could perhaps still be too much um, if this if this or the amount was were to be cut down to sort of suggested levels for them. What do you, what's, your, what's your take on that, on that issue please? Yeah, I, I think... Uh, <coughs> In terms of costs within the system, they are you know, far too high. We are in, a, in an environment at the moment where the costs attaching to claims are disproportionate to the outcomes for claimants. That isn't just an issue, obviously, for claimant lawyers. It is an issue, I think, for the industry in general, because so long as that cost remains within the system, then it encourages practices that obviously have unintended and undesirable impacts, such as the encouragement and incentivisation for increasing the volume of claims. So ultimately, I think we do need to see those costs come down. <coughs> I think it's for the benefit of the industry in general, and ultimately I think that will reduce some of the incentive and take some of the heat out of the fire. So I also wanted to ask whether you thought that there would be a missed opportunity if all of the Jackson reforms weren't brought in in this, in this interlocking package. I certainly do think that. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity. Uh, Lord Jackson has done a very comprehensive and substantial report, which I think is very widely uh, accepted. The government, and I give it credit, has introduced legislation in part two of the 2012 Act to put that into effect. The secondary legislation is being put into effect now uh, to take, uh, take effect on the 1st of April this year. I think now's the time for everybody in the insurance world, the legal world concerned with this, everybody, to say we've made great steps, we have got a great opportunity, we really can create an insurance system which is better, more transparent, uh, cheaper, better for the client, less uh, engaged in legal intricacies and gives everybody a far better deal. And we've got to that opportunity as a result of Lord Jackson's report and as a result of the government legislating on that basis. So let's seize the moment. Without the full interlocking package, including fixed recoverable costs, uh, there's a real danger that we won't get the savings that we can pass on to the end policyholders uh, and we'll end up with a neutral gain which won't have any benefit in terms of the, the uh, consumer. Do you think that claimant injury lawyers are paid too much at, at present for personal injury claims? I've seen some statistics on how much damages have been paid compared with how much the fees are. And frankly, it is, they are overpaid for the amount of work. And it's all about proportionality. And I think that's what the reforms are all about. And if we can get more proportionality, then it will be really good.